let's change gears for a second and let's let's talk about religion and the role this plays in the discussion that we're having here. Yeah. Four out of five Americans, according to a recent Quinnipiac poll, say that they they think it's very likely or at least likely that a major terror attack is going to happen in the near future. And the majority of those believe it's going to be at the hands of extreme Muslims. What role, if any, should a refugee's inclination towards Islam impact the way they're welcomed here? We will face other terrorist attacks in this country. I think, I'm, I'm sad to say it, but I think that's the case. We've been very fortunate during, under President Bush's leadership, and I know that that can be controversial, but after 9-11, we avoided having another major terrorist attack or any terrorist attack in the United States. We've been less fortunate uh, recently in recent years. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Part of it is the fact that we've allowed the Islamist terrorist threat to spread in an unprecedented way with ISIS. Uh, so I, I think that it, you know, Americans' concerns are valid. And frankly, that's one of the reasons why I'm running for president. That's that I know from day one what we need to do to increase our security here in the United States in a way that none of the other presidential candidates do. And I just think it's so important that we have a president who knows how to lead on that issue. Um, so you're saying the concerns are valid, but to what extent should someone's Muslim affiliation or you know Muslim religion play into well I think what we need to do first of all is decouple the idea that Muslims Islam equals terrorism that's not the case that's just not the case there are a very tiny percentage of Muslims who are terrorists that's the reality there's a lot of frustration in the Muslim world about uh, about a lot of things and that can lead them sometimes to be supportive of terrorism some of them when they are not themselves terrorists. That's a problem too. But the vast majority of, of Muslims are not terrorists and they're not supportive of terrorism. And that's where we need to start. That's where we need to start. In, it, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. To, yeah. In the past, you've talked about how Muslims have been vital in the counterterrorism efforts. Absolutely. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. And I, look, I would say, first of all, Muslims have been more attacked, more killed, more harmed by terrorism than even we as Americans have. That We need to realize that far more Muslims have been killed by terrorists than, Ameri than, than Americans of any kind, Muslim or Christian or Jewish or any other kind of faith. Um, so they get it too. And the vast majority of Muslims, again, are opposed to, to terrorism. And, uh, and, and so we have to recognize that. So with that as a basis, then we can understand that, uh, we have Muslim allies in our efforts against terrorism and, and their countries and their people, right? When I was working in the CIA, there were countries that did a lot to help us. And, and there were also individuals who, uh, outside of their, you know, whatever their government was doing, they stepped up to help us. And frankly, we could not have had and do not have success against terrorism without the support of our Muslim partners and allies. And it's either because they were in the battle with us, they were there in the fight with us, uh, or it's because they allowed us to use their, you know, a place where we could base our special forces or CIA operatives or traditional military forces. Um, they allowed us to fly over their country on a counterterrorism operation. These, you know, we, in order to be successful against against uh, Islamist terrorists, we need the support of Muslims and they want to help us because they, the vast majority of them are also opposed to terrorism. They see what it's doing to their faith. It's destroying, uh, you know, not destroying, it's, it's harming their faith as well as it's um, creating refugees who are mostly Muslims in the region. Uh, they see it too and they want to solve it. But actually they're looking to leadership from the United States. They need our leadership because we we know how to organize these efforts better than any other country and they see us not leading now and that's been a major source of frustration and then when we have presidential candidates who attack Muslims and other pe other people based on their faith or ethnic backgrounds that also harms their willingness to work with us or their feeling like they can work with us because they 
They think, well, what's happened to America? America doesn't stand for the personal liberty and religious liberty and tolerance like it did before. And, and I, I'm going on about this, but it's just such an important topic. When that happens, it harms our national power. Our national power comes from many different sources. One of them is our, our core values around liberty and, and uh, tolerance that comes with liberty, uh, religious freedoms. Uh, other countries see this and they say they aspire to it, other people aspire to it, and they trust us as a result of this, that it generates a lot of goodwill. And that means that these countries are willing to work with us. They trust us to come, for example, base some of our military equipment and military personnel on their territory, which is actually a very unique thing. Most countries would not invite the military of another, of a major power especially, onto their territory because it would pose a threat to their country. But countries allow us to do that, even beg us to do that, because of the goodwill that is generated by our ideals. And so when we have a presidential candidate who is violating those ideals and who is desecrating those ideals, it is a direct assault on our, on our national power. We have time maybe for just a few more sure. questions. This issue is bigger than you, it's bigger than any one leader. What can everyday Americans do to pitch in to the cause in the combat against the refugee crisis, the war on terrorism? Mm -hmm. a great question. The first thing is, we need to all across the, in this country advocate for our leaders to have a comprehensive strategy for defeating ISIS and for stopping the uh, mass atrocities that Bashar al-Assad is committing against the Syrian people and for helping countries develop better governance that leaves them less vulnerable to terrorist takeovers which create these refugee crises. We have to demand from our leaders that they have a plan and a commitment to that plan uh, because if not, the situation is going to get worse and worse. On a daily basis, refugees are resettled all around the country. People should find organizations that help refugees become uh, uh, integrated into our society and find, them, find jobs and learn English and all of that. All Americans uh, have the opportunity to get involved in that effort, and they should. Um, and, and that's what I would say. And then the, lastly, I would say that in the case that, that where there are leaders who are attacking refugees and vilifying refugees, um, we need to stand up to those leaders. And we need to demand that they speak the truth, that they acknowledge that there is a process to vet refugees and that um, terrorist organizations do have a harder time getting terrorists into the United States through a refugee process than they do through other ways that are way more efficient and that have a higher probability, unfortunately, of success. We need to make sure that our leaders speak the truth because many times, all too often in national security topics and on refugees, our leaders have They've, they've been responding to you know, a mob mentality that they've helped generate uh, and they have not spoken truth to the American people. We must call those leaders out and make sure that when they do that, they can't get away with it. Evan McMullen, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you.